Hello, this is Alex, welcome to Boomstick Gaming, and let's get into the nitty gritty details of Zombie Army 4 Dead War. I have figured out a few things that I think will help you all out with surviving your way through the game on higher difficulties, and also just in general hopefully improving the fun factor of everything by utilizing the little gameplay tricks I have for you. Some of these I would consider to be beginner tips and some advanced, but I'm going to try to keep everyone invested by jumping back and forth between these two skill gaps as we go along. I have in store for you some improved mobility tactics, alternate melee attacks, faster scavenging, cover mechanics, upgrades, character stats, and of course, rat combos, which will make sense by the end of this. We have a lot to get through in a short amount of time, so enough intro, let's get to it. There are certain types of zombies that will either have ammo, health kits, or grenades on them once killed, but will require a stomp or two to pinata the resources out of them. In the heat of combat, this can be problematic and slow, but there are a few quicker and more effective ways to do this. One is sliding your way through these corpses. That's a phrase I never thought I'd have to say. Sliding, which can be done by sprinting and then crouching, has a few other useful mechanics as well, which I will be coming back to a little later. The other reliable method, if you want to pop these guys from a distance, is to simply spend a bullet to shoot them apart, which works just as fast. There are numerous secrets hidden all throughout each map in Zombie Army 4, but one of the most important ones, at least early on, are upgrade kits. Each map segment has a different amount of these hidden in hard to find spots, so I recommend bringing up the interface that shows you how many are in the level as soon as you start a new checkpoint to give you an idea of how many you might be missing. These upgrade kits are what is used to level up and add attachments to your guns, which is a large component of the overall progression. Honestly, your arsenal can get pretty crazy once you start getting your guns maxed out. Don't stress too much on how you spend these upgrade kits, because these can also be earned in horde mode, just requiring some good old fashioned grinding. The other hidden collectibles you'll be finding around the map are worth seeking out as well, since they will unlock different perks and character skins. Just keep your eyes open for anything that looks suspicious in each map, and you will likely be rewarded with some kind of collectible. The containers spread around each map contain health kits, grenades, and mines, and take a second to open by standing in front of them. Or do they? Although this method is fine when things are quiet, in the heat of battle, the last thing you want to do is stand still and hold the use button. These containers can actually be opened from a distance by simply shooting them once, which I found to be more helpful than you might assume in difficult situations. You can also melee these open as well, but I wouldn't get in the habit of doing so because you'll find that you'll likely accidentally unleash your melee special attack, putting it back into cooldown. Sometimes shooting your way out or cutting your way through with melee just won't cut it, which is where the zombie tackle comes into play. By sprinting and pressing melee, you will perform a shoulder charge that will knock down regular zombies. This can be used to clear the path to safety, although it is somewhat risky since you can still be damaged during the animation, or you could just use it as a 1-2 combo, following up the dash attack with a quick stomp. Sliding into zombies will also knock them down as well, and I found these both to be pretty viable tactics for simply clearing the way without shooting. Combos and extending your multiplier is a big part of Zombie Army 4 since this directly correlates to how much experience you'll gain at the end of levels, and leveling up yields tons of advantages like extra perk slots, item modifications, and more. If you are truly trying to play optimal and keep your multiplier alive, look out for strategically placed rats and other vermin in each level that can help to keep your combos alive in between sections of the zombie slaughter. Although I cannot confirm this, you might even be able to string together one giant combo from the beginning to the end of a level if you memorize these vermin locations, which I will definitely be leaving to the speedrunners and leaderboard chasers out there. Have fun with that one. Oh 
Your overkill weapon assist, which charges up by kills, is pretty useful for taking down a single target to get a small portion of your health back. This can also be used at full HP where you can actually get temporary overcharged health, which can be quite useful in the heat of the moment. The second alternate use for the overkill is to use it on mid-tier zombie types like this armored buddy right here, since it will take them down instantaneously. Don't try this on boss type enemies, but everything else, might as well get that health boost working for you rather than simply sitting on it and wasting it. Zombie Army 4 is not a cover based shooter by any means, but that does not mean that cover does not exist. There is no lock to cover button, but if you get close enough to certain surfaces while crouched, you can actually aim and momentarily pop up to take some shots. Some enemies will be firing back at you, and this can be a useful tactic depending on the situation. This is not necessarily a tip or a gameplay mechanic, more of just a quick reminder if you happen to miss it, but notice that each character actually has completely different positive and negative stats. Boris, for example, excels at melee, but moves the slowest. June can charge up her pistol ultimate faster, sprinting costs less stamina, and she is overall the fastest, but quite weak in melee. Carl can charge up his overkill faster and excels at long range combat, but has the slowest health regen. Shola specializes in secondary weapons like assault rifles and shotguns, and has increased trap damage radius, but she is the most susceptible to gunfire. Use this info to play to your strengths, or just pick who looks the coolest. You'll be finding temporary weapon attachments in certain large containers, and how long you can use these is tied to a certain amount of shots. For this reason, I recommend attaching these to your main rifle to conserve ammo, since many of these elemental effects arc to multiple enemies with just one bullet. I was attaching these to my automatic weapons at the start, and found that I would burn through these power-ups way too quickly. With these weapon attachments, space out your sniper shots well, and you can take down piles of zombies in just a few shots. There is a certain zombie type that is wielding a makeshift flamethrower weapon, and if you aim correctly, these dudes are literally walking time bombs. Hitting them just in the arm or anywhere else won't trigger an explosion, but if you manage to hit them right in their red barrels, this will easily take down a small group. This is probably the least helpful advice I have in this video, but let me introduce to you the zombie uppercut. This can be done by pressing the melee button while crouched to knock zombies down. This can also be done out of a slide by pressing the stomp button, which is actually the only way to pull this off without using your melee ultimate ability if it's charged. This move might not be very practical, but it will surely impress your friends and slightly scare the neighbors. Zombies can sometimes reanimate if not killed with a headshot, which can really lead to wasting your ammo. It's hard to honestly say aim for the head in a shooter, but yeah, if you're curious why the undead keep coming after you, you might want to sever their connection with this reality. Those were all the gameplay tips and tricks I have for you today, and I know there's still a lot to be discovered in Zombie Army 4, so make sure to let me know what cool stuff you have figured out if you're playing it. If you found any of this to be helpful, or you'd like to see more coverage of this game, let me know that as well, because my comments section often shapes the future of this channel. Now, if you happen to enjoy my style of informative gaming content, consider subscribing to Boomstick Gaming, clicking that little bell icon if you already are, and you can also find me on Twitter, at BoomstickAlex. A special shout out to the top supporting YouTube members and patrons you're seeing in the bottom left corner of the screen, which really help to keep my channel fully functional. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.